Welcome to the We Can Fix Climate Change podcast. In today's episode, we'll cover Hurricane Otis challenging current predictive models, the need for government and industry involvement in combating climate change, California Governor Gavin Newsom's global climate policies, Shell's climate lawsuit rejection, the increasing willingness of young people to switch to alternative transportation, and more. Please subscribe to get our podcast each and every week. Hurricane Otis caught experts and locals off guard as it rapidly transformed from a tropical storm into a dangerous Category 5 hurricane in just a matter of hours. This unexpected escalation has raised concerns about the accuracy and effectiveness of current weather forecasting models. It is clear that this event cannot be simply brushed off as a minor miscalculation. It represents a record-breaking storm that challenges our understanding of how these weather phenomena develop. There is ongoing debate about whether labelling events like Hurricane Otis as climate change adequately conveys the urgency and complexity of these escalating weather patterns. Some argue that the term fails to encompass the full breadth and depth of the issues at hand. It is crucial to recognise that these storms are not isolated incidents, but rather part of a larger global pattern of changing weather patterns and extreme events. According to an article from Electric titled 49% of Americans think climate change is mostly someone else's problem, it is implied that a significant percentage of Americans don't believe in the efficacy of individual efforts towards climate change mitigation. While this may appear to be clickbait, it is crucial to recognize that many commenters on the Electric site, as well as ourselves, understand that addressing climate change requires collective action on various fronts. It is reasonable to acknowledge that individual actions alone cannot eliminate greenhouse gas emissions sufficiently to avert the worst consequences of climate change. The government, industry, and sectors such as energy and agriculture, which contribute significantly to greenhouse gas emissions, must also take steps to embrace greener practices. To initiate change, we can support politicians who prioritize climate change actions. However, it is equally important to have candidates running for office who genuinely believe in and actively advocate for stronger climate change policies. Government regulations and multinational industry agreements play a crucial role in reducing fossil fuel emissions, particularly from industrial and agricultural sectors. Therefore, while individual efforts are commendable, it is essential to recognize that systemic changes are necessary for substantial progress in combating climate change. By combining individual actions with collective endeavors, we can have a more significant impact on reducing greenhouse gas emissions and creating a more sustainable future. California Governor Gavin Newsom is making significant strides not only within the Golden State, but also in his efforts to turn climate policies into a global mission. With a vision towards a sustainable future, Governor Newsom has recently signed laws that have the potential to reshape the entire fossil fuel industry, positioning himself as a potential candidate for the White House in 2028. Demonstrating his dedication to the cause, he embarked on a trip to China where he intends to sign five agreements focused on exporting California's innovative climate technologies and policies. Newsom's actions in California are setting the stage for a transition towards cleaner energy sources, and his ambition extends far beyond state borders. By exporting the state's knowledge and expertise in climate technologies, he seeks to have a global impact, sharing the successes achieved in California with other nations. This move not only positions Newsom as a leader in the fight against climate change, but also positions California as a global hub for sustainable practices. A recent development in a climate lawsuit against Shell has seen a Connecticut judge reject the company's latest attempt to dismiss the case. The lawsuit was filed by a group of Connecticut residents in 2021, accusing Shell of neglecting the significant climate change-driven risks associated with its fuel and chemical depot located on the east bank of New Haven Harbour. Shell has been contesting the lawsuit, asserting that the courts lack jurisdiction and that the legal basis for the case is unfounded. However, the Connecticut judge has dismissed these arguments and permitted the lawsuit to proceed. The judge's decision is rooted in the classification of Shell's fuel and chemical depot as a public nuisance. A public nuisance is defined as anything that disrupts the public's ability to enjoy life and property. In this case, the judge determined that Shell's depot qualifies as a public nuisance due to its contribution to climate change. 
The judge highlighted various negative impacts on the public, such as rising sea levels, heightened frequency of extreme weather events, and adverse effects on public health. Chevron's recent acquisition of rival company Hess for a staggering $53 billion is a significant development in the oil industry. This deal comes on the heels of another major merger that happened just weeks ago, highlighting a trend of consolidation among oil giants. Meanwhile, the International Energy Agency has released a forecast that predicts a potential peak in oil demand by 2030. This situation prompts us to consider the rising prominence of renewables, such as solar and wind energy, along with advancements in battery technology. As the demand for cleaner and more sustainable energy sources intensifies, these industries are poised to play a more significant role in the energy transition. According to a report from The Guardian, a significant number of young individuals are displaying a greater inclination towards opting out of car ownership. Results indicate that 54% of 18 to 24-year-olds express their willingness to solely rely on alternatives such as walking, cycling, or using public transportation, with some already having made this transition. In contrast, only 45% of individuals over the age of 65 shared the same sentiment. Furthermore, the study highlights a noteworthy preference among the younger generation for electric vehicles. Around 41% of young adults stated their intent to switch to an electric car in the future, in comparison to just 21% of those aged 65 and above. These findings shed light on a shifting trend in transportation choices, whereby younger individuals are more open to embracing environmentally friendly modes of travel. A recent study conducted by researchers from Tulane University, published in the journal Nature Food, has unveiled significant findings regarding the environmental impact of dietary choices. The study suggests that adopting simple substitutions in our food consumption habits can have a profound effect on reducing carbon footprints and improving diet quality. By making conscious choices, such as opting for chicken instead of beef, or switching to plant-based milk in place of cow's milk, the average American could potentially reduce their carbon footprint from food by as much as 35%. The implications of this change are substantial, as the food industry significantly contributes to greenhouse gas emissions and climate change. Furthermore, these dietary substitutions not only benefit the environment, but also have a positive impact on our health. The study indicates that by making these small changes, individuals can enhance their diet quality by around 4 to 10%. This emphasizes the potential for a win-win situation where both the planet and our personal well-being can benefit. As noted in a BMJ editorial, over 200 health journals have come together to issue a clarion call. It's time to treat climate change and biodiversity loss as an indivisible global health emergency. They point to the inherent interconnectedness of natural systems and stress that ignoring this unity is leading us down a dangerous path. The journals lay bare the urgent facts. Climate change doesn't just melt glaciers, it exacerbates health risks like extreme weather, air pollution and infectious diseases. Think of marine phytoplankton that cycles a billion tonnes of biomass every eight days, acting as a crucial carbon store, or the indigenous communities whose land management practices are essential for environmental restoration. We stand at the edge of a health catastrophe that doesn't respect borders. This is not just an environmental issue, it's a global health emergency that requires swift, unified action from every stakeholder involved, especially the World Health Organization and political leaders. The journal Bioscience highlights the critical state of the Earth's vital signs in an article titled The 2023 State of the Climate Report, Entering Uncharted Territory. We end today's podcast with a quote. The trends reveal new, all-time climate-related records and deeply concerning patterns of climate-related disasters. At the same time, we report minimal progress by humanity in combating climate change. In this episode, we discussed Hurricane Otis challenging predictive models, the need for government and industry involvement in combating climate change, a Connecticut judge rejecting Shell's dismissal of a climate lawsuit, the willingness of young people to embrace alternative transportation, a study encouraging dietary changes to reduce carbon footprint, 
over 200 health journals urging recognition of climate change as a health emergency, and the alarming deterioration of Earth's vital signs and the urgent need for solutions. Thank you for tuning in to the We Can Fix Climate Change podcast. As always, don't forget to subscribe, share this podcast with your friends, and visit all our social media channels. And consider checking out our newsletter with more stories and links at wecanfixclimatechange.substack.com. Links are, as always, in the description box. See you next week.